um, this will help them. I can send them the link. Okay, I wish I could make this little screen bigger so I can see everybody. Oh, maybe I can. Look at that. Wow. Well, who would have thunk it, eh? Okay, so two, four, six, eight, nine. So yeah, we're still missing the two. Okay, so that's all right. Um, so in the meantime, what we're going to do is we're going to open up our packages. So everybody's got their package. Included in your package is going to be um, whatever colors that we had here at um, the clinic or what I put uh, in here. So um, we kind of got a variety. So when we're going to be beading today, it's going to be the peyote stitch. And on with the peyote stitch, you can make all kinds of designs and patterns and um, get crafty with it. Because we don't really have a design in mind, we're just going to kind of wing it. And whatever happens, happens. And then after you've learned how to do it, then you will be able to either take that one off and remake it or keep it and do another feather of your choosing, okay? Um, so with your colors, you can either put them in little piles all over your tray if you like. I'm gonna kind of leave that up to you because I think you'll get what you're wanting to do. In here, you also have a piece of leather this leather is going to be what we're going to wrap around your tail. In that leather, you will find one needle. Um, I have to go get my pliers because I I can't uh, I can't pull that. So just give me a moment. So um, I'm back. So these things are uh, very precious to me. Um, I had an injury on my hand many years ago and sometimes uh, grip is not always the easiest. So if you're in a situation where your hands are getting a bit weak from you know, the grip part, uh, get yourself a pair of these pliers because they do work really great and they're nice and small. So you can put them in with all your other items. Uh, so I'm just gonna pull this needle out of here. And hopefully I didn't jam that in too tight. Um, anyway, so there's your needle. And uh, then, oh, oh my God, did I put thread in there? Does everybody have thread? Am I the only one who doesn't? I have thread. I have thread. Oh my God. That would be awful if I didn't send you thread. So, oh, maybe look inside my bag. Oh, there it is. Oh. <laughs> okay, I got it. All right, so you have your thread. You will not need this much thread. There's probably about, um, I'm gonna say 24 feet in here, uh, but you'll use it for other things. So um, anyways, so today we have a turkey feather. Um, I got these from one of the bands down uh, out by North Bay. Uh, they were very gracious to uh, send them to me on time. Yay. Um, so a couple of things about the feather um, is it has these little tiny ruffles on the ends. And sometimes they're a little bit cumbersome to beat around. So I trim these off. And, uh, and then I put my leather up to where the most solid part of the feather actually is. So you'll see in here where... It's very solid on both these ends. Like you can tell where it tapers down and then all of a sudden the fluff comes out. So I trim those just to where it's gonna be convenient for me. And I'm gonna show you one I've already done. So you'll see this turkey feather, this is a really big long one. It must come from uh, the tail part because it's really long. But you'll see where I have trimmed that out and it looks very clean right at the 
at the, the top of the peyote stitch. And so uh, basically that's what you want it to look like. Some people, they like it with all these little fluffy ones on there. So you can keep that if you like, okay? So I'll let you decide that. And, um, and then we're, uh, we're gonna just basically go ahead and sew our leather on and get that part going. And I don't have my scissors. Oh boy. Sorry, I'm usually a little bit more organized than this, but it was kind of pushing the clock today. Um, okay, so, so I just got a regular pair of scissors that I use for uh, cleaning up the work that's there. So you just trim it very nicely, however you want, make it look how, how you want it to look and just give it a quick trim. And then, uh, and then we'll put our, our leather right up to that spot, okay? And I'm gonna leave a few of those little fluffy ones out because I like them, they're kind of cute. Um, now, oh, who's there? Hi, Kelly. Welcome aboard. Okay, so with the leather that you have, now I could not trim this. Um, for everybody's feathers because feathers are never the same size. So um, I kind of went, you know, as close as I could think it would be. And then you just have to decide what you want to do as far as, you know, the thickness that you want to go. So you have two choices. You can either wrap it and try to bead without it being sewn. So you can do it. I don't know if you can see that or not, but you can you can beat it like this, which is very difficult for anybody who's learning. So the other option is that you cut this to fit the exact dimension that that is, exact diameters. So basically what I do is I measure and I just put a little pen mark on where that seam would be. So if it's meeting there, you make your little pen mark and then we're just gonna cut that straight down, okay? And uh, you don't have to worry about, you know, how much is left over down here because that's just gonna be decorations anyways. Um, I didn't, I don't think I sent you as any, any uh, pony beads, did I? Pony beads are the bigger beads. They're usually about a quarter of an inch to three eighths of an inch big. I didn't send any this time. Um, so your, your feathers won't have those beads on them, but if you want to add them later, go for it. It just makes it kind of have a little bit, I'll show you what the pony beads look like. So these are the pony beads. Okay. You see, you see how much bigger they are than the other beads, right? Like they're, they're gigantic, right? So just, if you want to put those on later, you go ahead and do that. Okay. I just completely forgot to send some. And honestly, I didn't really know what color anybody would want to do. So, um, so in the meantime, what we're going to do is we're going to trim our leather right down. Um, we're going to take off however, however much you figure that you need to wrap around your, the base of your feather. Um, I know Shirley has a bigger feather, so she's probably not going to need, um, or she's probably going to need more leather around hers. Oh, there's Pam. Hi, Pam. Sorry, Terry, you froze when you were talking there. So am I leaving any overlap or I'm just trimming exactly to Well, line I, up? I think for the beginning, like being a beginner um, at the first feather, we need to, um, I think we need to sew it up so it's nice and tight. Cause I, I think it'll be too difficult for you to hold the leather in place and do the peyote. Cause peyote is, it requires literally all of your attention at the beginning, okay? So trim it back till it wraps up and those two ends are equal, okay? Do you understand what I mean? 
Yeah. Now, there are people who decorate feathers that do not put the leather around. They just put beads. Well, it's better if you um, put the leather because it protects your tail end eh, from breaking and stuff. So put your leather around, trim the length of it. Hi, Pam, are you, how are you? <laughs> you made it? I'm good, I'm having some issues connections. Okay. But I'm working on it. Okay. So just right now, what we're doing is just wrapping our, our uh, tail feather. Okay, so you don't need a lot of thread for the sewing of this. Yeah. The red ones are for leather. Okay, I'll just bring them right back. Are you done? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So take, a, I don't know, maybe a foot of thread. And what you want to do is you just want to only, well, you can do both ends. Let's just do both ends. That way it's a little bit tighter. So put a little knot in the end, make sure it's nice and, and tight because you don't want that to come out. So anyways, welcome back everybody and uh, welcome to the newcomers. Really good to see others joining. So make your tail, doesn't have to be that long. You can trim it off. And now I'm gonna teach you how to do a whip stitch. So the whip stitch is uh, something that I've learned recently, have heard lots about. It's very, very simple and um, it looks really nice and neat when it's done. And because we don't really need a whole lot of stitches throughout this, this is the perfect one to use for the tail. Now, uh, what I try to do is I put my seam at the back of the tail. Okay, so it should look like this, like you're making a taco. Okay, everybody got it. So make yourself like this little taco like this and just hold it between your thumb and your finger. It's really super easy to do that. And then what I do, what I do. Holy. you got it, is everybody, is everybody there? Yeah, okay, so at the top, about an eighth of an inch from the top, poke your needle through. Don't poke your finger or your thumb. Just poke your needle through the leather. It's going to be stiff. I did try to get the, you know, the softest one we had here. So it's going to be a little bit stiff. But so you want to go from the inside to the outside and hide this string. Okay. You hide your knot and your string and everything in your little taco. Okay. How you doing over there, Sarah? <laughs> you're going to be fine. You'll see. Okay. So, and as you're going along with this, it's really super easy to adjust it. You just turn it. That's all. Okay. So now take your thread and go, don't go from the inside, go from the outside, right straight across from where that one was laying. And what I do, this is where the part gets tricky that you kind of almost have to, um, you kind of almost have to concentrate on your angles, right? So instead of going right where the thread goes in the first time, bring your needle down on an angle and about an eighth of an inch down from that thread. So you'll, I'll try and turn it so you can see it. So you want to come an eighth of an inch down and push it through. And you're going to see it's going to come out on an angle from where the other one was and just pull it through just like that. And now you see where you are, you're going to end up across from that thread again. So you poke back through and go back through on an angle again. And this is called the whip stitch. You see how it's working? So I'm going to pull that through and then I'm going to pause for a second and see how y'all are doing. These are fire, girl. Sorry? Who's having trouble? Everybody's got it? <laughs> so, Shirley? I'm good. Okay. I'm good. I'm 
Would you be able to hold that up closer to the camera? Just of course. Okay, so across from your thread, poke it in and bring it over on an angle so that it comes out past where your other thread is coming out. Okay. So I'm just going to use my pliers because I, I have to. And I'm just going to pull that out like this. And you see how it's nice and neat straight across. A lot of leather work um, that is exposed, suitcases, um, boots, you know, just anything where the stitches um, exposed, they will use this type, this type of a stitch if it's done by hand because it's nice and clean. It looks good. So anytime you do any leather work at all, this is what you want to do. Now I'm noticing that my leather is actually a little bit too wide. I need those scissors. I'll just set, just set them here. Okay. I'm just going to trim this off a little bit more just because I'm kind of a little bit wide there. Okay, I'll set them back there in case you need them, Shirley. Okay, so does everybody, is everybody getting kind of about halfway done? It's literally just basic sewing. Like if you had a hem on a skirt um, and you were in a pinch, this is the easiest and best way to make it look neat and tidy before you, uh, before you uh, wear your dress. It's really super easy. How's yours looking? Shannon? Good, okay. Carolyn? You coming? <laughs> You'll get it. Oh, Terry, the two edges should get it. They should meet, they should meet together. It's like your fingers, okay. how they're side by side. That's exactly how that leather should look. And this honestly is not going to be seen. No one is ever going to see the stitches underneath your beadwork, especially in this situation, because we're going to cover this. So if it isn't beautiful, don't stress about it, okay? When you have stuff that's going to be exposed, then you can stress about it, okay? Right now, all we want to do is we just want to get your leather sewed together so you can start your peyote stitch. I, I'm, I don't see Pam anymore, so I'm hoping that she's there. So did anybody get finished their earrings from Christmas? I know I've seen a few people sent me the emails. Um, I know some people didn't get their packages. Okay, so um, I'm almost finished my tail. So I'm going to uh, finish off with a knot on the end. And basically what you want to do when you're finished your tail, like you're, you finished your last loop across, what you do is you come back through only just the one side. So we're going to come into the center, if I can get my thread to behave. We're gonna come only in underneath in here like this. So you see you're in between, right? Pull your thread through and then just kind of loop it in and make a knot. So you're gonna make your knot just like a surgeon's knot. If I can get it. So you go under it once, go under it again, and then just pull and then you're done. So that's your, like I ended up doing seven, eight. I did eight stitches. So you should be pretty close to that. Now, we have a very small feather. Uh, there are bigger ones than this out there in Featherland and Birdland, like the Eagle Feather, if you're very fortunate to get one of those. Um, uh, they are very beautiful when they're beaded, but the uh, ones that are most common are these. And you can get the, um, there's another one, it's a quill feather, but 
um, they're a different shape and color. Um, okay, so I'm gonna let you finish that and I'm gonna grab some of the beads off my tray. I have no idea what color I'm gonna use yet because uh, my creative mind has not got there yet. And I'll get my needle ready. So I learned a couple of things about thread. Oh, so I found out that when you take your thread off the spool, I'm going to go grab the spool so I can show you. Here, you can have leathers. I, I don't know, they're for leathers, for leather scissors. Oh, do you need a pair of those? Yeah. Oh, okay, let me see if I can find my I don't want to be in special treatment. Yeah. I do have another pair, but I think I got a pair at home, but so I can just watch. It's okay, Tara, if you want to keep going. Okay, how's everybody doing? Did you get to the end yet? You just have to let me know when you're at the end, okay? So while you're getting there, I'm going to show you something about thread. So this is called, um, I call it Nymo. Others pronounce it Nemo, which doesn't really sound very right to me. So um, you pronounce it how you like, okay? Anyways, when you take your thread off of this spool, on I, I won't do a whole long piece of it, um, but just to show you. So you take it off the spool and when you cut it, you never use this end to thread your needle you always use the first end. And the reason why is because when they made this thread, as they're spooling it, it's spooled this way, right? So it's spooled downwards. So as soon as you cut this end, it unspools, but it doesn't unspool from this end. So when you go to thread your needle, I have a spare one here, it literally just goes right straight in the hole like that. Isn't that something? Like whoever thought of that? Anyways, then the other thing was that when you get this thread off, so say you're gonna use, it depends on the person. I always use enough thread to, um, you know, hang myself kind of thing. Anyways, you give it a pull every four inches like this and that stops it from spiraling. I don't know how come it does it. I don't know why, but I've tried that technique on this one project that I'm working on at home. And I'll tell you what, it really, really works. So once I started to make up all these little things for y'all, <laughs> I think I was two or three in before I realized that when I was spooling it for you, I was supposed to spool it the reverse. So my apologies to the three people that got the one that's not spooled in the right direction. Okay, if it's not working for you on that end, switch the end, okay? <laughs> Anyways, so, and you never know, maybe I was one of the ones that got that one. So I'm gonna find out right now. So that's my tip on the thread for future, whenever you're going to be using um, beading thread, it's, uh, you always use the end that's first, basically. So um, has everybody done their tail feather? You only went down about an inch and a half, eh? Tied it off. You don't want to go all the way to the end. You only want to go this far. You see how far I went on mine? I'll bring it closer to show you. 
I could have went a little bit farther apparently, but I'll, I might be able to trim that off because you can trim your, your feathers as well. You, you don't need to leave it that long, but we can get into that after if we have to. So um, with your thread, you're gonna wanna have, I don't know, three feet if, if that's comfortable to you. If it's not, don't worry, you can use two feet. You can use a foot. A foot's kind of sucks though, because then you gotta change a lot of times. So I, I work with between two and three feet of thread at any given time. So now um, I really like some of these colors that we have. They're, some of them are really sparkly and um, so I'm probably gonna use sparkly ones. I use a lot of these, you know, our, our colors. I use a lot of those uh, in my beadwork, like uh, my little little daisy chain here has got all the fire colors on it um but then i also do um you know different different types of beadwork pop sockets or whatever and we can't call them pop sockets sorry phone grip cover um and just like other little things keychains all that little stuff i use uh the fire colors for because people love them and also these are our traditional colors right here these four um, if you're from uh, other bands, maybe a little bit more south, blue might be one of your colors in here. Okay, uh, so I don't know what y'all are going to use, but I'm going to use gold. I love gold. And so I did learn a little bit about some beads uh, as well since we last met. Um, there are it's unbelievable how many inferior beads are out there. You gotta really watch. Um, I think I talked about that with, with a, a group of you is already about inferior beads. So um, what it is, is you gotta watch that they aren't just dying the outside of them. Like you can get some of these really beautiful metallic colors and they're so lovely when you look at them. Then you start beating with them and oh, lo and behold, where's, where's the purple gone? It's gone because it's wore off, right? So um, you got to watch when you buy any high density per, um, beads. Opaque beads, you will never have a problem with. They're not as uh, vibrant and beautiful as some of those, um, I don't know what you call them, pastel colors. But anyways, okay, so pick out your colors, whatever you're going to use. Uh, I'm not real sure about this green. I do love it, but I don't know. Oh, I seen a green and black um, thing earlier. Maybe I should have did something with green and black. Anyways, pick out whatever you want. Get them out on your tray. You don't need a lot because this is not a really big project. Pam, did you get your feather uh, leather on? Yes, I did. Yeah, thank you. Okay, perfect. Everybody else, Sarah? Okay, beautiful. So um, I think for me, I'm gonna go with those four colors. Now you pick whatever colors you want, okay? And then we're just gonna, we're gonna wing it. Now you'll notice that these ones here are different from the black beads, the yellow beads and the red beads. So the black beads are, they're opaque. And like I was saying, the opaque beads are, they're amazing. They, they will never fail you. They're so beautiful and so perfect. You get ones that are a little bit smaller than the other, but the color is always gonna be true all the way through. Um, so these ones here, these are a crystal bead and if you can get a true crystal bead that's not a silver line, the color on those also goes all the way through. If you have a silver line, which is these ones here, they're, they're good, but there is a chance that they might fade. The silver inside might come out, but that's like years from now. Okay. So now what we want to do is we're going to try to figure out what, how many beads we need to start with. 
on around our circle. So whatever you're going to start with your first row, I'm going to pick black because it's my favorite color. So I'm going to pick my black. So I'm going to pick up eight beads to start with. And then we're going to see if eight fits. Probably won't. It'll probably be more like 16. But anyways, we just wrap it around like this. And you see how far apart that is? You definitely need another eight beads. So I'm going to pick up eight more beads. Is our thread supposed to be doubled? Uh, it is not to be doubled and there's no knots. Okay. Um, it looks like mine is doubled, but uh, once we get to the end there, and I'll, I'll do that now so that you can see. So you can, I just uh, always start my circle right at the top so I don't lose my beads off the other end. Okay, so. Hey, yes? Just wondering, how long are we supposed to make our string this time? Uh, I would go like at least three feet. Because. Okay. That's doubled though? Yeah. Okay. Well, I've, I pulled mine three feet long like this, three feet, okay. and now it's in half, so it'll be half of that. Okay, thank you. Okay, so now I just, uh, I lost all my beads, so I have, to, <laughs> I have to add them back on. Just give me a second. How many do I got? Uh, six. Okay, so I'm gonna put 16 and see if that works. Now I'm not gonna go all the way to the end just yet because, um, because I need to have some balance. So basically what I do is I start, um, I hold my tail in my left hand. I'm, I'm a right-handed person, so I always hold my tail in my left hand. And I'm gonna just set it on my, like I put it right on my feather like this so that I have some balance and then I go around around the circle and see how many that is. And I see that for me, 16 is too many. And you can tell, like, see, that's how many too many it is. It looks to me like I'm at least two too many. They should join. So I'm gonna take two of them off. And now I'll check it out one more time and see. Okay, and yeah, so there's a little bit of a space. Please don't worry about the space, okay? It's all right if there's a little tiny gap there. If it's too big, add a bead and then we'll talk about how we're gonna fix that later, okay? Um, right now, I wanna try to teach you how to even stitch peyote. It's really a lot more um, involved than odd stitch. Odd stitch is easy and it's kind of like a cakewalk actually. So I want you to learn this one because when you get this, you're going to master it. It's, it's an amazing stitch. So now I've got 14 on mine. I'm going to bring it to the top of my feather. And what we're going to do, actually, you don't even need to do that. So once you have everything together, bring it down to where your tail is only a single tail, okay? Not a double. You want it just to be single. So you got your 14 or 16, whatever it is. Now take your thread and feed it through all those beads again. Make sure you're going through the proper end. Don't go through your end that your thread's coming out of. So go all the way through all of your beads. Okay, and you should end up, if you've done it correctly, you should end up with a small little circle. Okay, so just pull it nice and neatly like this. And don't worry about your tail just yet. We'll fix it, okay? So there, now I have my circle. You see how it is? It's kind of like a little loop. Now, depending on the person and who's teaching everything, some they don't go through that they don't go through this one, but I do. And I found out the reason why is because whenever I leave this tail loose like this and it's kind of got a gap, it never works for me. So I go through the next bead, okay? And it makes a true circle and you'll see. You see how nice, beautiful that is? It's really round. And that's what you want. So now um, I know it's gonna be a little bit difficult, but 
you need to try to get it back onto your feather and it'll open up. I mean, it's not pulled that tight, right? So that's why I usually try to leave it on there, but I wanted to show you um, how to uh, make it into a circle. So now- Terry, could you go a little slower? Okay. Okay, so where is everybody at? Has anybody made the circle yet? Yes. Okay, so I will wait for you to catch up to me. And as soon as everybody's done, please give me a thumbs up, okay? Sarah, if you have any questions, unmute your button, okay? And just ask me whatever you need and I will answer, okay? Because right now I can't hear you. So if you have questions, you need to unmute. Sounds good. I'm, I'm, I'm done. I did the circle thing. Okay. So for when you put this back on, you want to make sure that you've got one tail in one direction and your needle thread in the other direction. Okay, so they should look, they should look like this. And they both should be going through the same bead. Okay. How you doing over there, Cheryl? Oh, I'm ready to go. It's okay. I'm learning. Terry, when you're making your circle and you go back, do you go back through all your 16 beads? All of them, yeah. Go through every single bead one time. And then the last one, you hit the second bead to make it a perfect circle. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. Did you get it? And always try to leave yourself a nice tail, like... Don't be shy to leave, even if it's a foot, it doesn't matter. It's just thread. Leave enough that you're not gonna be short when we go to fix your end at the, at the end of the whole thing, okay? And sometimes, and it, dep it depends on the project that I'm making, but if I'm doing something like a bigger project, I will, to start, I'll tape this. I'll tape my tail to my leather just briefly. And then it doesn't move on me. But this is a pretty small project. So I'm not sure that we really need to do that. But if you're feeling uncomfortable about it, absolutely get a small piece of tape and just tape that to your leather and it will not move. Okay. So um, is everybody ready to go on to the next step? Yeah. So if you are ready, now you've got your tail hanging towards yourself. You've got your thread with your needle on the other end heading upwards and towards the left. That's the way it should look. Does that what it looks like to y'all? Okay. So now, oh, that's wrong. Sorry, Terry. Yes, go ahead. Sorry. I've got the right number of beads to go around the around the first time. Okay. And so I'm going to go through through them all, but skipping the first one. Uh, no, I you go through every single bead. So if you have 16, you go through all 16 beads, and then once you've hit the 16, then you go through the next bead. Mm. So I have them on. Yeah. Show me. Yeah, like that. There's my tail. Okay. 
So am I going to like loop right around and yeah. come up through all of them? That's correct. You want to make a circle. Oh, okay, yeah. Through all of them. Yeah. I do all of them because it's a lot easier. It, you, you don't have to, you can only go through the first one, but if you do only that, it becomes more difficult to do your up beads. And you'll know okay. what I mean by an up bead in about 10 minutes. <laughs> and so then I thread that or like feed that onto that feather. Mm -hmm. If I have a circle, I'm gonna. Yeah, put it onto your, onto your, uh, your leather. Okay. Just like how mine is. Are you able to see me? Yep. Okay. So it should look like, it should look like, here, let me just grab my tail there and I'll show you. So when you're, oh, when you're completed, your tail should come out to the right and your needle thread should come out to the left on the same bead. Okay. Okay. And then um, I just move it up a little bit and hold on to the tail feather down at the bottom. That way I know where I'm at. That's why I'm holding it like this is so that everything stays stable and you're, um, and then you, you know where you're at. Like you just want to know where you're at, right? Okay, so once you're on to the leather, what you want to do is you want to pick up your next bead, try to pick up a different color, okay? So whatever your next favorite color is going to be, pick it up. So um, I decided I'm going to do green. So now this is what is really super important on your first step. Your first step in peyote is the most important step of all of them. It's because if you don't do this correctly, it will not work for you. So when your thread is coming out of that bead, you want to skip over this second bead that's right next to it and put your needle through the next bead. So we're gonna do that. Hold on here. I just I'm trying to figure out a way to do this so that you can see me at the same time. And then pull your tail. Don't let your tail get stuck in there. Okay, so now you see how it's kind of poking up. You want all your up beads now to be on the top of this circle. Pull it a little bit tighter so that it everything stays in its place. And um Hold on to your tail. Okay. So now we're going to do exactly the same thing again. Now it's sitting, you're, you're coming out that bead. It looks exactly the same as the last one. Pick up your next bead and you skip over top of that one that's sitting beside it and go through that next bead. Okay, and then you just pull it out. I know my hands are going to be in the way, but I don't know how, any other way to do it. <laughs> um, and try to get your, make sure your leather doesn't get stuck in there too. Okay. Hi, sorry, me again. <laughs> okay. Um, are, are we doing this at the bottom or the top? Of Either one. Either one. It doesn't matter whichever way you want to go. Okay. Some people like to start from the bottom. I, I would start from myself from the top, but I, I'm starting in the middle because it's easier to hold it. Once we get going, we'll move it. Okay. And um, so I have my circle on and okay. then to close that circle. So I've got my needle thread coming out on the right. Yeah. Okay, so yours is on the opposite side of me. So I'm going to um, just take this off 
Everybody else keep going. Okay, I'm just gonna take this off so I can show Carolyn. If I can. Uh, somehow I've got, where's my needle here? No, that's not going to work for me that way. I, and they, I'm Do you gonna, want me to flip it around? Is that going to be better? Either way, whatever works for you, whatever is the best way for you. I, I don't have a preference working from bottom to top. It just, that's the way it ended up on my, on my feather when I, okay. I've got a really serious knot because I was trying to take this out. So I'm going to have to catch up now. Give me a minute. Everybody just keep going. You, if you uh, fall behind, just, uh, or you need me to slow down, just let me know. Who, who left? That looks really awesome. It's looking really good. Okay. Oh, yeah, see now I just lost all my beads. <laughs> I think it's probably better if I take my, my circle off and flip it around so that my needle thread's coming out on the left side, because that's the way you're teaching it, right? That's how I do it, yeah, on this, in this particular set. And I find yeah. it's more comfortable to me to work from right to left, because I'm right-handed. If you work, if you go the other direction, you get, it gets cockeyed on you, I find, anyways. Okay, I'm going to do this again here. Just give me a minute. I'll catch up. No, take your time. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if you're ahead of me right now, when you get towards your last um, colored bead, so whether it's green or, or red or whatever color your color is, just pause for a minute, okay? So that I can show you how to get up to the next step. Cause you're gonna have to do a step up and you wanna, you wanna be aware of how to do the step up properly. So I'm back to making my circle. Okay, and oh. So you make the circle, you put your beads all the way through. I will send you the link, Shirley. You're welcome. Sorry, you couldn't stay longer. Happy for what I got to see. Okay, see you later. <laughs> oh, yay. So I'm back to the circle. And you can see where they're spread open. I don't know if anybody's still at this point, but you can see where it's spread open. You don't want that. That's why I said, go through the next bead and then the circle will close. And now you see how it's closed. It makes a big difference, right? And that's what you want. So now I'm gonna put this back on my tail feather and I want it to be uh, this way. Yes. Okay, so now, so usually I don't, I, I don't uh, take it off of there when I start. I usually always start with it on there, but uh, in this situation, I don't really know why I'm doing it like that. <laughs> okay, so now we're back to full circle on your, on your uh, leather. I got to move this closer to me. I, I don't know. I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm too far away. Can you still see? Okay, 
So first, first green bead or colored bead, you skip over one bead, put your thread and needle through the next bead. Then you pick up another colored bead, whatever your color is, skip over, you do exactly the same thing. It's very, very repetitive. And when you get going and you're on your next, like as we're building this, so say another three rounds, you're not going to need me anymore. <laughs> okay. Trust me, you won't. It's so repetitive. The, the hardest part, I think, about the peyote stitch is the start to get this circle going and, and just understanding how to make it work. So keep going, skip over a bead, put your needle and thread through the next bead and try to keep those colored beads, whatever your color is, up above so that they're not flopping down. If they're flopping down, something's going wrong. You're getting tangled up. So try really hard to not tangle your needle in with your thread and just keep going and keep going and keep going until you get to where they meet up. And once they meet up, then I'm going to show you what to do next. The step up is the hardest. When you're doing odd stitch peyote, you don't have a step up. So a lot of people who want to do quick, fast work, they'll do an odd count because it's fast, it's easy, and there's no step up. And it's literally going in a circle. You're going in a complete circle all the time. You never have to do a step up. Okay. So now I have, I'm at my last part. So from the green bead here, okay, just pay, kind of pay attention to this part, okay? From this green bead here to my very first green bead, I have three black beads in between. Okay, everybody have that? Please let me know. No. How many do you have? You should have three. If you did an even number of beads to start, you should have three at the end. Well, it, yeah, it, it should be three because the other one's kind of coming out that. Take a look at it again. Is my camera focused enough? Okay, so when you get your last colored bead, whatever your color is, you want to cross over that last, that last crossover, like just so jump over that one. Bye. <laughs> um, okay, so cross over top of that bead and get into this next black bead. And then what you want to do is you want to feed from this black bead and step up into that green bead or your colored bead. Okay, that's why we chose another color for our second row. So it's a little easier. If you were doing black on black on black, oh gosh, it's really super hard. So try to do your first, like you can do a starter row and take your starter row out. A lot of people do that actually. And that's when I first started learning the peyote stitch. I did a starter in a different color. I picked gray or something that wasn't even close to whatever my project was because I, when I, when I was trying to do it all in the same color, like I would draw this pattern and everything would be all beautiful and it would look good. And then I wouldn't be able to do it because I didn't know where I was supposed to go. So then I was watching a video. Um, and if you ever really are, you know, wanting to spend a little bit more time on the peyote stitch, um, there's this lady, her name is Jill Wiseman. Uh, I imagine Jen's probably seen some of her work now because Jen's been on the internet a bit. But if you can get a hold of the Jill Wiseman's even count peyote stitch um, or odd count, that woman is amazing. She helped me so much when I was beginning to bead. Okay, so now is everybody done their step up? No, well, of course I'm not. Um, Can you show it again? I'm not either. 
Okay. <laughs> okay. Let I me do take have the three beads though in between. So that's good. Okay. Let me take that last one out then. No worries. I, that's what I'm here for. Okay. So we're going to take, I'm just going to take my last bead out. Everybody else uh, stay where you're at. Okay. Let me set this down. I'll rethread my thread. Oh, I'm so glad I got the one with the good end. It hasn't frayed yet, and I've pulled that out how many times. But I'm also getting kind of blind, too. Maybe I should get my eyes checked. Or maybe I just cut my end. How about if I just cut the end? There. Am I all alone now? Okay. Uh -huh. Interesting. Now I can't. I can't uh, find the hole. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> That's a good one. You put it in the. You put it in a black background. Okay. Here I can't see it, but I put it here. I can see it. Go figure. Okay, so now I'm back to where I still have those beads in the center. I've got my, I've put my colored bead on. So what you want to do is you want to cross over this bead here. It's the only loose bead by its only self. You want to cross. Oh, where? Oh, wait a minute. What do I, what am I trying to say? Okay, I had it perfectly. Why is it not thinking? My brain is not thinking now. Wait, give me a second. I'm going to take that off because it's just confusing me. And back through. Oh, okay. Duh. Sorry. I had to have a moment there. Okay, cross over this bead that's all by its lonely self. And you want to go up through this black bead that's beside it. You know your first bead where your tail is? Go through that bead. Okay. And go. Can you see it? So you know where your tail's coming out? That's your starter bead, right? That's the very, very first bead that you ever had. You go through that bead and then up through the green bead and pull it. And what will happen is that last bead that you had will now sit on the top and make you a perfect uh, step up. Did it work? Or am I not? It doesn't really look like it's working. Okay, what's going on? Something's going on. Do I have the wrong amount of beads on here? Did I miss something when I took that off? Okay, I got a black bead there. It's like it's tangled or something. Okay, it'll look a little funky there and I'm thinking that I must have made a mistake in there somewhere now. Because it should it should look like a kind of a zigzag with a green on the top. And it does. It looks like that all the way around. So I've got, I think I've got the right amount of beads on there. Closing in, closing in, closing in. Yeah, okay, I've got the right amount. So now that I'm at the end, so did everybody get their step up? So I just want to make sure I got this. You go through the original first bead and then you go up through the colored bead that's on top of it. That's correct. So I'm, I'm out of my colored bead now to yep. start the next row. Now we're going to start the next row. So when you get to your next row, now you are going to do exactly the same thing. But pick your color so that you, you know, like however you're going to make your design, everything is done on creation, right? On how your brain thinks. Like if you look at this one that I did, 
I didn't, I didn't have any concept at all. I was just like, oh, I'm going to use these colors because they're my fave and blah, 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 whatever. And I got going and I was like, oh, what if I reversed this one and did that? And, you know, so whatever, whatever colors work. And a lot of times people uh, don't know about the color wheel and what colors actually go together. So um, if you want to make your work look fantastic like like okay so look at my mask right my mask imitates beadwork right the beadwork that's on here it it's all done in colors so you can see how it steps from the blue to the white blue and white are good together right and then the white goes with the yellow and then that's how it becomes all those beautiful fire colors that we love so much right and then um same thing with over here, like it has the yellows and the blues with going into green. A lot of people don't like blue and green together. We do. It looks beautiful on beads. So, um, so whatever you choose to do for your pattern, um, it'll come to you. It'll come to you as you, uh, as you go along. Oh, who left? Shannon. Ended. Okay. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take your next bead and you're going to go right through that green bead. And I was going to do black, not green. Just give me a second here. Oh, I did do black. Okay. I should have my, my rubber gloves on today. My hands are so dry. So, and then as you keep going, fill in those beads. You probably only have seven or eight to do. Uh, depending on how many you started with. Terry. Yes. For the second row. So I, it's coming out my colored bead. I put a bead on and go through the next colored bead or do I go back down through the black bead? So you'll go down through the black bead and then up into that first colored bead that you had. I'll show yeah. you again. So I'm already there. Okay. It's the next one. So so I put on a bead and go through the next colored bead or do I yeah. want to go back down again? Yeah. yeah, you see how it's, uh, you don't go back down. Absolutely not. You just keep going right straight across. See, you're just basically filling in that hole, Kelly. You see where okay. the hole is? You just fill in the hole. Would it be easier if I turn my camera around? Like... It's kind of like I'm beating upside down. Does it, like if I turn my camera the other way, would it be better? I'm okay. Yeah, okay. So, um, all right. So now I'm gonna pick my, up my last bead from that row and I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. You see where this black up bead is right here? It's all by its lonely self, right? So. You want to go through that black bead and go up into your colored bead and come back out again. So every time you've done a full circle, you're going to go through your last bottom bead. This is why I trim off these little fluffy ones because they always get in the way. Um, you always, Whenever you get to the last of your round, you're going to always go through that last bead and then you're going to go up through your last colored bead that's in there. And I don't know what's going on here. What did I do? Epic fail. Like, I, I don't know what I was doing here. What? Okay. When you play back this video, you're going to laugh. You're going to see, oh my God, what is she doing? Okay, I'm just gonna try to reverse my steps. Even the teacher has to be taught. Okay, where am I at here? Oh, okay, I see. I was jumping the gun. So you go through all your colored step up beats. Okay. Try to get to the end before you go down. <laughs> oh my God, I should not be laughing. I just realized I'm being recorded. 
<laughs> oh, crap. Okay. <laughs> All right, now I'm at the end. Oh, whoop de doo I finally made it to the end. <laughs> okay, so now we're we're at the end and we have, remember our colored row that we had? So you have your last colored bead. You go up through that colored bead and in through the black bead because that's your whatever, or whatever your color is, okay? I don't know what your colors are. Does anybody have a specific color they're using? Black, green, and silver. Oh, nice. So you see how mine looks now? You see how it's kind of got a, a green for every, for every black? And this will get tighter. As we get going, it will tighten up. It's just because right now I'm, I'm, I haven't pulled anything really super tight. But you go ahead and don't be afraid to pull on it. That thread's really strong, eh? So don't be afraid to pull on it and, and make it work for you so that it's all nice and snug. Okay? Okay, you don't want it to be loose and fall off. Oh my God, what happened to my beadwork? You know, you don't want that. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to go on to the next row. And I think I'm going to stay with that green for another row um, and then switch it up after. Do maybe a black and a gold or something. I did a lot, uh, a lot of keychains recently, all in peyote stitch. And oh, they're just, they're so fabulous to work on. When you get the hang of this, you can make anything that's tubular. And also, uh, that was one thing that I was discussing with uh, Jen earlier was doing flat work. Would anybody be interested in learning how to do any two needle beading flat work? I'd like to try it. Okay. So um, what I would have to do is I would have to try to figure out what would be something good and easy and fun to make where in the end you'll be able to wear it or keep it as a souvenir. Because, I mean, for me, when I make medallions, I always make medallions for the individual, I never make something just out of, off the cuff. It's always got a reason, right? So um, if we're gonna start on, on a design, um, we're probably gonna do it over two sessions so that, so that y'all can work on it through the week or, or through the time you know, that we're um, away from each other. And then we come back to it and see how everybody's progressed. But if you really are interested and you want to learn how to do two needle beading, I'll put together something very small, like maybe this big around, you know, like maybe two inches. I'll do some little fancy design. I don't know, Lion King head or whatever. I don't know, we'll figure something out. Maybe a turtle, turtles are really easy. And I'll send you all the material that I use when I do my flat work. And then um, you're going to need to have some glue. So, and if you're going to buy glue, um, make sure you get some good sticky glue, like stuff that will stick to leather. Um, and I'll send you the pellen, the leather, the beads. Um, I'll send you a new needle because uh, you'll probably need one sharper than the one you're using right now. That one's probably getting dull now, like from the leather. And um, the pattern. And from there, then you'll be able to, um, you know, make that with me at the same time. And then when we close off after our hour, hour and a half, then we'll come back, we'll come back and we'll do another one. Um, the other day I made something, I'll show you a picture. I can 
find it here. So I made this little tiny medallion. I would love it for you to get like to make this. This is so cool. So cool. So oh, which is the best way? Oh, that is cool. Okay, so this is so this idea came from Aaron. Uh, thank you, Aaron. I don't see you there, but I I know you were there. Anyway, she had this uh, one of the one of our coworkers, Joe Ann, who was there but not there. Uh, she had this, and it's a um, uh, it's a little pouch to carry your medicine in. Oh, so you see how it is here, right? And I made two sides of the rosette medallion. Remember, we did rosettes a little bit at the beginning. For those that were here at the beginning, we did some rosettes. So we did. I did two rosettes the size of um, maybe one of those big old silver dollars. Remember the nice silver dollar we used to see back in the day? Well, I did that, two of them, sewed those both to leather, and then I attached the two together and left the space. I didn't know how to do it. I just winged it. I took a couple of pictures of the one she had and that's in, that's how it ended up. And then I just did a single strand. So if we did a small medallion about this size in two needle beading and then just did a, a small little chain on it, would that be okay for y'all to learn that that way? Yeah. Okay. So, sure. let's, so let's, I'll find out what to make. And then, uh, and then we'll go from there. So where is everybody at on their, um, on their, their tricky feather? Are you at the step up again? So you go through your, your last black bead and then up through your colored bead. And then you should have, it should be sitting just nicely for you. How are you doing, Carolyn? I think I do okay. Like I've got the beads on. Okay. Is this little piece here, can I cut that right <laughs> off? You mean the leather that's hanging down? Well, there's that part hanging down, but this part here that was... Um, I can't quite see it. You'll have to move over a little bit to your left. Oh. Oh, yeah, you can cut that off. See, I was going to cut mine off too. Mine's a bit long. So yes, absolutely. Just snip it off. Very, very simple. Just snip it off like that. Watch you don't poke your eye out, okay? <laughs> a little bit sharp. But yeah, absolutely, it doesn't need to be that long. No, okay. the, the, leather, the leather part though, this part here. Oh yeah, cut that off, absolutely. You can go all the way to the end. Okay. Yeah, because you don't need much of a tail feather. When you're doing tail feathers, you don't need a long piece at the end. See, when I did this one here, I had, it was quite a bit wider. And so I had lots of leather to work with. And also the other thing too, was that I didn't stitch it together the same way because um, I didn't really need to. I was uh, like, I've been doing them for a while now. So you kind of get used to it, but that's why I have so much leather there. But when you, uh, you know, after you're done this one here, when you're ready to do a second one, you'll know exactly what you need. Okay. So now um, I've got my second row of my color bead. So now I'm gonna put one more row of black and then I'm gonna switch to a new color. And don't forget to keep pulling tight on that so that it gets snugged up and, um, and is anybody running out of thread? Please let me know if you're running out and don't run out when there's only four inches left. Please leave a little bit more, okay? You shouldn't be if you did three feet. You got lots of three feet. Okay, so now I am going to be done another row here. So I'm going to go back through the step up again one more time with you in case you've missed it. So when you're at the end, you see those beads sitting there by themselves, you go through that colored bead, if I can get it, and then up through that up bead. Okay, Kelly, do you understand? Want me to do it again? 
So yeah, you, the you, second row still, just closing it off. Okay, so if you're at the close off part, you want to go, you, so you see where your, your thread is, right? You skip over this bead and you're going to see your colored bead. Go through that colored bead and then directly through that top bead. Is it showing well on the camera? It's showing well, but I, I don't know if I'm at the right spot. So I got back to where the three were by themselves. Yeah. Right? Okay. okay, so I got my last bead in and I still have two there. Do you want me to just skip those and go up to the top bead again? No, so you, have, you always you always have you skip only one all the time you skip over one and then you're going to see one that's a little bit raised up and that's the one you want to go through and then you go up to the top bead so i don't know how else i can show oh how does that look can you see that yeah okay so you see this bead here okay so there's the loose one by itself and then you cross over that guy and then you go through this one here, the colored bead, where I'm just going to try to get that angle better. Go through the colored bead and then go up through that the top bead. So you're actually going through two beads. I think I have too big of a gap. Mm. Oh, the, it'll close in. It will close in. Can you see that? Uh almost like you're let me see if i can make your i feel like bigger. i'm missing a bead because i did the i did the hanging one and now i went through and filled in in between and then i ended here with the last bead at the end of the thing but there's still a big gap in there okay so pick up your bead and go through that next bead like go over top of you always have to skip over and then go through that next bead and it'll close in. You'll see how it closes itself. Because they actually all kind of leave a gap. And if it's, if it's not sitting straight for you and it's kind of looking a little cockeyed, just straighten it out. It's uh, it, it, it's always difficult at the beginning and it never, ever looks good at the beginning. It always looks really like crooked and it looks like you're missing something. But when in reality, you're actually not. So I'm going to change my color now to the clear just to give it another look. Cross over the green bead or whatever color you're going with. And just keep going around until you fill every one of those spaces in. And that's really what it is. It's filling in those spaces. So you see the space between, fill it in. Over top of that bead and fill it in. And you can see how it's just coming together real nicely. And then once you get to the end, you're gonna see that there's only a big wide gap there. Okay, so you can see that there's this wide gap between this one and this one. So you pick up your bead, if I can get it here, you pick up your bead and you cross over your green bead, go through the black bead and up through your new color. And that'll start your next row. And now you've closed your row again. And if you keep doing that all the way around, oh, if your feather is starting to look a little rough, don't worry, it will come back. <laughs> okay, mine's uh, kind of getting a little rough there, but it will eventually come back. You just got to play with it a bit. And it, it's, it's like it's a miracle. <laughs> Did you know how hummingbirds get back to south in the winter? Did I ever tell you? 
So I found out that the hummingbird, um, that, you know, they can't survive and you have to stop feeding them uh, fairly early so that they start getting themselves ready to go south, right? Well, they actually piggyback on the back of the Canadian geese. That is so awesome. So the Canada goose is probably about 18 to 20 inches long in body and it has the tail feathers at the back. They burrow underneath their back feathers and they just fly away because they would never make it on their own, right? They're too tiny. They can never fly that far. Um, so they catch a ride and that's how they do it. So that's the only thing I know about birds. <laughs> My little guys. Yep. Otherwise, especially up here, they would freeze. So I think I'm going to stick with black as my main color because I'm I'm loving it, and I'll just use the other colors as accents. How are you making out, Sarah? I don't hear much from you. Um, I'm I'm putting beads on and they're staying on so far. So I don't know. <laughs> so far, so good. So. Oh, good, Jen. How about you? How are you doing? I'm doing okay. Yeah. Um, Is it looking yeah. how it's supposed to? Oh yeah. Uh, Look at that. <laughs> Very good. That's awesome. Carolyn, how's it, how's yours coming along? Oh, look at her. She's just giving her. Uh, that looks really good. Okay. See, it's I don't, pretty, I don't pretty, know if um, I'm doing it quite right, but it looks right. Well, w once we uh, have the video completed. Um, then... If your beads stay on, you're good. <laughs> All the, yeah, if the beads stay on there. And I'm going to teach you how to tighten those up too, so that they don't fall off, because there is a technique for that too. Um, and we'll, we'll go over that as soon as we're done. As long as everybody gets kind of like to the end. Um, I'm not sure how far Kelly is on hers. I know she's uh, plugging away on, on the third row. Um, uh, what about you, Pam? How far are you on yours? Uh, quite, a, quite far. I'm probably seven rows now. Oh, good. Okay. Well, that's great. So easy, just, easy. Oh, slow down. <laughs> <laughs> just keep going. And, uh, I, I have been practicing though, since our last time together, I have been working on it. So, oh, good. I'm getting a little comfortable. Yeah. And uh, you guys will have enough beads now and enough needles um, that you will be able to practice. You know, I've given you just in this lot alone, I've given you enough beads to do probably 10 of these turkey feathers. Okay. So um, once you get the technique down of doing the stitch, you can make keychains, you can make. Um, what other things are good for peyote? Uh, oh, you could do something like really drastic and unreal. And it's, uh, you know, you know how the old people, they care, they use a cane. And I guess this is really depending on how much you really, really want to be. If you did a cane and I've seen people win awards for their cane work. If you, if you figure out your design, obviously you'll need to know your own pattern and look, look some patterns up. Don't be shy to look that stuff up. That's how I got all my ideas. I mean, you have to get them from somewhere. Anyways, you just look up a pattern, see what you like about it. Don't use the whole pattern because that's kind of like kind of lame. You know, you want to try to figure <laughs> out your own thing. Um, so do something different on it and um, draw it out on, and you can go on a website. It's called, um, did I already tell you this? Fire Mountain Gem, Fire Mountain Gem Beads or Fire Mountain um, Beadwork. Yeah, Fire Mountain Beadwork. 
if you go on there, I'm going to try to find it here for you. Um, firemountaingems.com. When you type in that, it's going to come up printable seed bead graph paper. Okay. They have all kinds. They've got square, which you use for loom work or just flat uh, square, lazy stitch, or not lazy stitch, sorry, uh, ladder stitch. Um, and then they have the peyote. Uh, which we're working on right now. And you can do the peyote in flat or in circular, tubular. They have other ones, two drop peyote, which I do not know how to do yet, but I am going to learn. And then they have ones for doing brick stitch. So now what you do is you go on to their site and you tell it that you want to print off the peyote. I always print off the peyote stitch one and it's free. It's free for all of us. So you go on their website. Uh, I know it's upside down, but I'm going to show you anyway. Take a quick gander at this. And you see, and it's numbered all the way from one all the way up to whatever that number is up there. So you can actually count how many beads that you're going to need for your pattern. So for example, if you're going to do a lighter case, um, a lighter case takes 42 or 44 beads in a round uh, around the thing, right? So then divide that by two is 22. So you're going to need 22 down beads and then however many up top. And I believe it's like, uh, I believe it's like 50 upwards. So in that little pattern, you can draw like your angles and your designs and everything like that. I learned a lot of my work on these graph paper. So don't be shy to use that stuff. Uh, the, that, so that one was the peyote. And then this one here is the loom one. And you can see it's very, very straight. And so that would be good for flat work as well. Bracelets, you know, that kind of thing. So you go ahead and, and print those off and make up your designs from there. And, you know, don't be scared because nothing um, says that it has to be done a specific way you know you can do it however you want that's the joys of being creative right freedom of create creativity um so now uh what was i what was my point i forgot do we again oh because you have so much beads so when when you're sitting there and you're watching tv you know get yourself a little tray or whatever it is that you like to bead on try to buy yourself some of these pads these beading mats, they're amazing. Like you're, you never stick to it. I love it. I, I have so many of them at home. I would give you all one if I could afford to. Maybe I'll send you one anyway. <laughs> Maybe I'll just do it. I'll buy a whole bunch and send them. Um, so now if you keep going with your beads and just as you're buying them, you know, and I'm going to, I ordered a bunch of the Fire Mountain or the fire colors. So uh, on our next session, we should do we should do our flat two needle bead work in fire colors. Ooh, you want to do that? Mm -hmm. We'll do a gradual step. I'll do a design. I'll print the design off, and we'll all do exactly the same design. And it'll all be done in the fire colors. And I'll show you how to graduate from the blues up to the blacks. It looks so sweet. Oh. Okay, so now I think I'm gonna do green again. And I'm gonna try and catch up to you. You probably are all beating me here. You too busy talking. <laughs> because I want to show you how to finish it off before we close out for the, for the day. Um, um, it's really super easy to close it off. Um, you just want to make sure that it's nice and tight and that your actually uh, your leather work and stuff is not going to fall off. And basically I, I can tell you ahead of time, what we're going to do is when you get to the end, you take your thread and you just go through your up bead your upbeat row 
you go through it over and over and over again until you can't go through it anymore and then you tie it off and make sure as you're doing your row that it's your first one you pull it nice and snug and your second one you pull it again and you just keep keep it nice and tight oh look at that okay so this is how you know if you made a mistake you see right here look at this big gap there you see that so I missed a bead there. I missed one of these white beads or a green bead, whatever was supposed to be there. So I've got a nice big gap there. And how you can tell is there's a big thread there that doesn't belong. So now I have to back it up. Oh no, back it up. It doesn't take long to take it out. That's one thing anyways, at least we only have seven beads around. It's different when, oh. So I did this sure. chain. Um, when was that? It was a couple of weeks ago when I did this keychain. Um, I should show you a picture of it. It's very nice. Um, anyways, oh my goodness. I was about maybe six or seven rows in after my mistake. I had to take it all out. And the reason why I had to take it out was because it was so visible that there was no way you could hide it. <laughs> really? There was just no way to hide it. So after you've done usually like two rows, say, look at it and then go back. So I took that out and now I'm going to fix that mistake that I made there or the one that I did not put in and I'm going to go through here properly. And now I'm, I'm back to where I should be. So thankfully I noticed it right away. Oh, anyways, now I'm, now I'm back with the program. <laughs> so how do we know, like, when do we change our thread out? Cause I'm. Is your thread short? Well, not yet. It's still a, at least 12 inches, but. Okay. You're still good. Short, too short. Yeah, you're good. I'll show you when. Uh, when you get to be about maybe eight inches, then let me know and we'll uh, we'll do it. Hopefully you'll be almost done by then. You won't need to. But it, it's really super easy to, um, um, to tie your thread off and then put a new one in. And I could actually probably show you um, beforehand. I'll try to, I'm going to try to catch up to y'all. Uh, everybody must be at least halfway done, eh? Mm -hmm. Kelly, how are you doing? I don't see you anymore. Mm -hmm. Beating incognito? <laughs> no, I, I have a poor internet, so it works better if I don't have the video on. Oh, okay. But can you still see me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I did the same mistake. I went on to my third row and by the time I got back around, there was a huge gap. So I had to take it all back out. Now I'm starting at the bead. Okay. <laughs> second row still. All right. That's good. At least, it, at least you recognized it. And that's the main part about it is that you recognized that you had, had missed it and, you know, you just go back and do it again. And that's the best part. I, I love beading. I, I don't know. For me, it was it was a dare. I, I know that I think I've probably told you that it was um, not really a dare. It was more like a, well, you should find something to do and, you know, beadwork would be it, right? <laughs> okay. That was my sister telling me that. And uh, so I, I ended up really loving it. And it's now one of the things I do pretty much every night of the week. <laughs> and if I, if I'm not at home beating, it's because I'm busy doing work or whatever. I rarely do anything else. I'm now I'm working on, oh, I've got three projects on the go. Holy geez. Okay. Don't do three projects in a row. Your brain, <laughs> it's really super hard on your brain. So I'll tell you what I'm working on. Um, I just finished the keychains. I had a big uh, order in for keychains. I had, um, I think six or seven of them I had to get done. So I rushed through all those, got them all done. They're beautiful. I'll show you a picture. And in the meantime, 
I'm working on a pair of moccasins that I'm um, replacing. I had made them for my sister when I first, first started beading. So I, uh, I started working on her new pair. And um, of course, it's really difficult to stay focused on a pair of moccasins when you're, when you're not, when it's not working for you. So in between doing those, I pause and I work on other things. And so now um, I'm working on this big scenery. Um, I'll show it to you. I can find it here. So this is what I'm working on right now. Oh, wow. It's, it's very basic right now. Obviously, I haven't gotten, to, I just started this two days ago. So the moon is almost done. I'll probably have that done tonight. It's really close. Um, this is supposed to be trees shadowing onto the water. <laughs> I don't know if it looks like that or not, but that's what it's supposed to be. And then I have more trees over on this side. And then this is all going to be water. And I'm going to bead this so that that looks like a reflection of the water on, on where the duck is. I don't know if that's going to work or not, but I'm going to try it. And uh, then the, the bird, uh, the birds, plural, they will be done only in black and white. I'm not going to put any color at all in those, in those birds. They're just going to be straight black and white. And this, this piece is about either eight and a half or nine inches across. It's huge. Wow. wow. So I have that project on the go. And I signed a contract with a guy out, out um, in Edmonton um, to make his wife a pair of moccasins. I'm just waiting for the footprint to come in. Oh, nice. Yeah. And then I did, so I did this keychain. That one was sent to Saskatchewan. And then I did this one here. Wow. So when you're doing your peyote stitch, just know that these are done with the same stitch that you're learning to do today. And they're all wrapped in leather. And then I did, uh, I'm not really sure why that phone's ringing, but I can't answer that. So this is my keychain. I think that uh, some of you have already seen it. And then I did a little mini one for Erin. She wanted a, a small one for herself because she found that mine were a little bit too big. Uh -huh. And then I did these two here also in the fire colors. They're lovely. Nice. And then I had, oh, I replaced a pair of earrings. Oh my God. Okay, years ago, I my very first, set of earrings I ever did in yeah. our traditional colors was this set of earrings right here but they didn't last long um and it obviously from you know the fact that I didn't know what I was doing they turned out pretty good for not knowing right mm -hmm. um so I replaced these for her and I made her these ones they're almost identical, but they have a different clasp on them. They're quite lovely. They turn out really nice. Get off of there. Um, the other ones that I made for her had hoops on them. They're, oh, there they are. These are the original. Sorry. So that's the original earring. And then that one's the new one right there. Nice. Yeah. So that's what I've been working on. Um, and I did a couple other small, little, tiny projects. But um, And I'm also working on this bear paw. That, yeah. So I got lots of stuff on the go. So I just, uh, I think that my only suggestion is that finish what you're working on. <laughs> okay. Like, yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's really the only advice I have for you. I, I, I don't know why I do what I do. It's probably because I'm really OCD or something. I don't know. But I have to be busy all the time. And so uh, when one project gets in my head and I can't stay focused on it, 
I drop that and I find something small to do like these are really great to do because they're really small. They're fast. You can get, you know, four or five of them done in no time. And, and then you, then you cleared your mind from the difficulties of those, those bigger projects. So just, um, uh, try really hard to finish what you got going. And I, like, I have other stuff, uh, in, in a bin, I was, I had started a project working on my grandson's vest and that was like over a year ago and it's still sitting in the bin because I honestly just, I can't find, I can't find what it is there that I need to find to get it done. So uh, one of these days, hopefully before he's not outgrown it would be really good. <laughs> Okay, so I'm on my upbeat there. So I'm back on the top again. And I'm going to start doing my black again. If it gets twisted, so this happens to me often. And all I do is I just turn it around a little bit. And I, I get it so that it's sitting properly. So it's not really a big deal if it gets kind of crooked on you. What time are we looking at? We're doing good. What time? Oh, I, ha I have my clock in, uh, um, I don't know what you call it, soldier time. So I never know what time it is anymore. <laughs> so if uh, if everybody is uh, doing good, well, we can continue for a little bit longer. Okay. If, you, uh, if you want to, I'm game. Terry, what size uh, of these be are these beads that we're using? Okay, so these are size 10 beads. 10 are great for beginner beaders because you can actually see the hole. Um, they are the most uh, popular in the size for uh, regalia because uh, when you look at your regalia, there's a lot of beadwork on it and you like you're almost pressured to get it done very quickly and you can get it done quickly with a size 10. The next most popular bead, uh, seed bead anyways, is uh, the 11. And you see a lot of regalia done in the size 11 as well. Um, so uh, if you wanna get into some more fancier work, uh, this the Miyuki beads, the Japanese Miyukis, they're called Delica. They are, um, sorry, Miyuki is a, is a brand style of seed bead. The Delicas are Japanese as well, but they're called Delicas. And they come in size 11. Uh, you can put a size 11 Delica beside a size 11 seed bead and they don't look anything alike at all. They're, um, they're completely opposite of uh, shape, size, everything. And they're beautiful. They're, they're one of my favorite beads to work with. But I don't use them uh, on my regalia. I don't use them on moccasins. I tried it once and ooh, what a nightmare that was. <sighs> okay, so if you ever wanna do a circle um, on flat work with uh, a Delica bead, they're tubular, eh? Like they're absolutely perfect tubular beads. So if you ever want to do flat work and you actually have a circle that you have to do, you don't want that bead. <laughs> it's, it's horrible to work with for that. But for doing flat work, uh, like ladder stitch, brick stitch, um, what's the other kind? Maybe uh, loom work. Although I don't know many people that would do those, use those beads on loom work because they're very, very expensive. You can, this little bag here that, that I sent you. So presuming it was a little fuller than this because I've taken some out. But if I bought this exact same weight that I sent you in a seed bead, it would cost maybe a dollar. Two, two max, okay? But you want to buy them in the Japanese um, Delicas, you're looking at five bucks Ooh. for the same grams. 
Um, actually, it's probably less grams. But um, so if you're going to buy them and you know for sure that these are the colors that you're going to choose, like when I did that lady's earrings and I replaced those earrings, she was the only one that's going to want that color at that time, right? Um, and this is going back a considerable amount now. It's like five years ago when I started beading. So to me, that was very expensive. I almost croaked when I heard five bucks a do. Are you kidding me? Anyways, um, so I told her that she's going to have to pay for the beads because uh, I'm not buying those beads. There's no way I'm going to ever use those again. That's now. I love using those. <laughs> so uh, anyways, um, yeah, just uh, if you're going to buy if you're going to buy the Delicas and you want to work with them, just be aware that they are a little bit expensive and uh, make sure you get the colors that you want. OK, so I am a little more than halfway done mine. Is everybody else about the same? I'm just going to push this up because my leather is poking through. And I don't want it to be. I, I need my leather to, to be hidden. OK, some people actually leave the leather showing or leave a portion of it showing. But I don't like that because I feel like it's going to fall off. So I reinforce it by sewing that up. Um, OK, so this is what mine's looking like so far. You can see it's uh, kind of taken shape there. It's very, very dark. Boy, I picked a dark color, eh? Did anybody else go with dark? <laughs> you see what's happening to my thread? You see how it's all getting all knotted up? So a few, a few videos back, um, I had mentioned that if you got really super dry skin and you're gonna use thread, um, you might want to use a rubber glove so you can use those ones that, um, like a surgeon's glove or whatever, you know, like the, the very form fitting one. And you actually might even really just like using them because they're, they're, they're comfortable, you know, and you can get a grip on your, your needle a little bit better. Um, so in the summertime, I don't have any problem at all with my skin being dry and it wrecking my thread. But in the wintertime, oh, it's, yeah, it's not good. It wrecks my thread. So I use Fireline um, to do most of my beadwork. I rarely ever use thread anymore. Uh, but although I do have a spool at home, once in a while, I'll pull it out to do certain stuff. Um, the, the spool that I got um, is very silky and it's not very nice. So, but this thread, this particular spool, I wish I knew what it was because I quite like it. And I think that I would use this more at home um, because it's thicker. Eh? It's, a, a, it's a better quality than the one I have. And, uh, but I don't know like where, where they got this one from. So I have to ask them. So I decided that since I'm in the middle, <laughs> or close to the middle. I added a, a little bit of a gold one there just to try it out, but I won't do two rows. I'll only do one because um, I don't have enough room. So now uh, the one thing that you want to learn uh, also is when you're making something that's a specific length, like I, at home, I have a small little tape measure that I keep close on my beading station. And I use it often to measure my pieces that are this length. So say this one here was two inches long. I would make a mark at the two inch line and my center beads for my design would then be on that line. That's, I would gauge my work on that. And so, um, because I didn't do that to begin with and I didn't really talk about it at the beginning, um, we're not gonna really worry about it too much. But in the future, whenever you're going to be going on to doing more of this type of work, um, especially anything tubular, measure your centers out. And that'll give you uh, how many beads that you'll need. 
like how many rows you're going to need before you get there. And it helps you with your design process as well. And is anybody, how, how's your tail end there, Pam? Are you, are you getting I'm close coming to, the, to the end of, of my thread? I'm going to have to replace it. Okay. So um, do you, are you at the end of a row by right now? Actually, I am. Okay. So if you're at the end of the row, I'm going to show you how to tie it off. Okay. Because I need a new thread. Mine's all wrecked. So if everybody else uh, wants to learn this part uh, now, I'll give you uh, a quick lesson on it. So since you're at the end of your row, what you want to do is, oh, hang on, I'm tangled here. So you see where you're coming out? You see the bead directly below it? Mm -hmm. Go back through it. Okay, just shoot your needle through, pull it tight, and then go back through the next one like this. Okay, just weave back and forth on the same row, Pam. Okay, just keep oh, going okay. like that. Oh, you see how my threads bunched up because my hands are so dry. I should go put my gloves on. Okay, so what I do when I went through, I don't know, you pick however many rows that you want to go through. Uh, I went through five beads, maybe. Come back to your next one. Okay, come back to that one. And then just cut it. Or, well, I'm going to cut mine a little bit shorter, but just leave it hanging. I'm just going to cut it a bit shorter because it's uh, all frayed anyway. And uh, I'm going to go grab a glove. I'll be right back. I feel like I'm alone. <laughs> Must be. Okay, so um, so I got my trusty glove on. Don't be scared. <laughs> okay, so now uh, grab your more thread. Oh, I'm not even using my one that I made up. Oh, well, that's okay. So cut your thread, stretch it out a little bit so that it's not all um, tangled. And thread your needle. Ooh, I feel like one of those blue men. <laughs> Only I do not play drums. Got a lot of gifts, but being a musician, definitely not one of them. Okay, so now you see where your thread's coming out, right? It's, it's basically just kind of hanging there, right? You don't want to go through that bead. What you want to do is you want to pick the bead that's, oh, hold on here, what's going on? Okay, I need to, whoop. Okay, so it's coming out here. So on the opposite side, you're going to see the bead that's directly across from it or, or thereabouts, as long as it's on the next row. Okay, go through it the opposite way. And leave yourself a tail about the same length as the one that's uh, um, right there, the one that you just left. Okay, hold on to them together. Now weave yourself back up side by side. Keep going to the top. Here I am beating with my tongue out. I said I was never going to do that, and here I am doing it. Okay. All right, so now... What you want to do is you want to make sure that your your uh, actual needle is going to be coming back up through your upbeat. And if it isn't, um, just thread yourself back through until it comes back up through your upbeat like that. Okay. Okay. Now, you you can either do what I do or do your own thing. I always leave my tails hanging and I tie them all off later and I burn them all. Um, but in this situation, um, because you're beginner beaters, uh, maybe now might be a good time to tie it off. And because of how we went in and out there, it'll be really easy to tie the two together. And this is the only reason why I tie this off the same the way I do, so I can make a knot there. 
A lot of people don't do it like that. They just burn their ends and they don't even, they don't even tie it. But I do, I, I tie all my work. So you can loop it through twice to give it that nice tight knot, pull it down inside there. And you see, you won't be able to even notice it there. You can do it twice if you like, but I trust my knot and then I cut it close. When you have a moment and you're all finished, don't worry that it looks like this, okay? You can see how I have a couple little tails there. Mm -hmm. Okay, just push them, like burn it and push them down inside like that and you'll never know they're there, mm -hmm. okay? Does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So I'm going to finish mine off here. And then I'm going to teach you how to tie it off. Okay. So now we need white. So what colors did everybody choose? I didn't even ask. Did you choose every color? I'm just using the four colors. Okay. Pam? Uh, my, me too, the traditional colors. Oh, nice, okay. Sarah? Um, I use black, green, silver, and gold. Oh, me too. Kelly? I use black, purple, and that Early silver. Oh, nice. Oh, they're all going to look so beautiful. Yeah. And I find a, a lot of people uh, like, okay, so when I'm making uh, work for others that have ordered stuff, I always ask them, what color do you want? And if they say blue, I say, okay, well, um, I got six blues. I take a picture and I show them the blue that I want and they pick their own blue. Um, if they ha pick a color that I don't have, I order it. Um, but generally, uh, if it's work for myself, which I don't really have any beadwork for myself, except for my keychain. Funny how that is, eh? I love beadwork so much, but I have nothing for myself. That's how it goes. <laughs> it is. It's crazy. So sad. I hear you. <laughs> I started a purse for myself. Uh, a few years back now and oh uh, then I got an order and then I got another order and then I got you know and you know how it goes right yeah. all these orders and now you're not even doing any finishing up so uh, the purse that I ended up making and I'd never made a purse before in my life like holy crap anyway so but it turned out fairly decent you know like the the basic part of it oh, did I miss a bead? I did. Talking again. Oh, honestly. Okay. So uh, anyways, if you're going to make something for yourself, it's really easy to choose colors and do, you know, and do your own thing because you know what you like for colors. But when you're choose when somebody else, um, if you're beading for somebody else, you got to find out what they want. Don't just pick their colors for them because uh, nine times out of 10, they won't like it. They won't tell you because they don't want to hurt your feelings because you're you did such a fantastic job, but it's not their color. So always ask first and uh, start slow, start little. <laughs> okay, don't pick a set of regalia. Um, uh, Carolyn and and Sarah don't know this, but my first bead project was a full set of regalia. Oh wow. <laughs> Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, that was scary. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah, so, um, I mean, I'm glad I did it because uh, it, it just, it made me have finally something that I really enjoyed doing. And, and I think that it's really hard for people to find a hobby that they are going to be 100% in. And uh, like, I've done lots of stuff over the years. I've had those paint on the cloth thing and spent a lot of money on that stuff. And um, 
I was an avid pool player. Actually, I went semi-pro for a lot of years and uh, went on the, the pool tour. And um, so that was a hobby. But eventually at, at, at some point you got to quit playing and, you know, and so that just kind of went away. But this, I feel like I had had, it came across to me at the right time in my life where I wasn't working. I didn't have to work because uh, I didn't. And um, I had all kinds of time on my hands and I was bored senseless because I'm a worker bee, right? I'm one of those people who, who has to work to stay normal, not work financially, but to stay normal. And I uh, ended up being like going to the point where I was stir crazy. And that's when my sister says, you should start beating. Bella needs some regalia. I'm like, what do you mean? I don't know how to beat. I don't even know what regalia is. Anyways, so I did a lot of uh, looking up and a lot of asking and I got a lot of help from uh, this guy at the bead place out on the reserve in uh, North Bay and his daughter helped me a little bit here and there and um, I get to watch a lot of Jill Wiseman videos and uh, watch some of the old schoolers, um, Joaquin Phoenix uh, and his uh, um, walking, uh, what is it called? Uh, uh, something regalia. I, I can't think of the name right at the moment. Uh, and his name is not Joaquin Phoenix. It's called, his name is Joaquin Lone Wolf or some, Lone Lodge. Oh. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay, so anyway, I watch a lot of his stuff. Uh, his old grandmother uh, was a fantastic Lakota beater. I'm Lakota, right? So um, for me to watch her bead and just listening to her stories and telling, uh, you know, how things are and our way and stuff was really fulfilling. And, and so um, I started getting into it, you know, and a little bit more here and a little bit more there and trying this and trying that. And eventually I got this huge bug in me uh, that I was now a beater. I'm, I'm a beater. I, I can't say I'm not. And uh, I'm by no means a, a professional or a master, I, but I have the love of it and I have the gift um, to do it, you know? And I sit up sometimes till midnight, just beating away, watching TV and chatting with the old man and, you know, set yourself up and like try to find yourself a nice tray and get the mats and, you know, find the thread that you like and buy a pack of needles and, you know, just do, do all those things if you want to become a good beater and, and buy the stuff that you're attracted to. Don't buy it because somebody else, um, because somebody else likes it, you know, get, get what you want. Like I've got a lot of crap at home that I don't even know why I got it. Like I spent all that money and I don't even like it or I don't use it or whatever. Like don't buy a whole bunch of cabochons and don't buy a whole bunch of glass or, or <laughs> different beads that you're not going to use. You're not gonna use yeah. Like I have this, I have two big containers of pony beads. And I, oh, I showed you earlier what pony beads were. Mm -hmm. So I have two big containers of those at home. And the only time that I use pony beads is on tail feathers or uh, I did a pipe, pardon me, back uh, quite a while ago. And I put the pony beads on the pipe, on the, on the leather for the pipe. And uh, really, that's, I bring them out when the kids are there so they can make their own little necklaces and stuff like that because it's easy for them, right? And it gives them the bug too. But other than that, I don't use them. So it was kind of a waste of money because there's lots in a bag. Oh, there's got to be a thousand of those things in a bag. Like the bags are huge. They're Is like, that like um, dream, dream catching beats? Is it something like that? Uh, you can use them in dream catchers. Uh, I find them a little bit big for that, but. Okay. Or for the ends? Would it be yeah. for the end parts? For the ends, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so I use them for that as well. Uh, I used to make a lot of dream catchers back in the day when I when I started to find some sort of a hobby. I was, I said, oh, I'm going to make dream catchers. Yeah. 
That's my favorite. <laughs> That's my favorite. I made hundreds of them. I I hundreds that. of dream catchers. Everybody that I know that's related to me has one of my dream catchers, either in their vehicle or in their house or in their drawer or in the garbage. No, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Like I yeah. have, I've made you don't got one. No. <laughs> no, they're pretty easy to make. Yeah. Yeah, they are. I like that. But yeah, if it, you know, stick to buying uh, your seed beads for now, size 10, get used to the bead, get used to the needle and the thread. And, um, and then once you're used to um, working with what you've got, then venture out and do something else. But don't waste all your money on stuff that you're not going to use. Because I got, like I said, I got so much stuff in my containers and I don't even look at half of that stuff. I much prefer to do this and oh and leather when so when you're buying leather I don't know if I've spoken about about buying leather before but since we have a couple of newcomers today um, so you can buy leather pretty much at any hobby uh, place they, they always have some of it there. iBead sells it. Um, the guy out at, uh, oh, what is his place? Supplies for the Soul. That's the one that he used to be out on the reserve. It's actually his wife's business. It's not his. Um, but I only ever knew, knew him. So um, anyways, if you go there, uh, they also have a very, very, very good supply of leathers, different types, like whatever you you want you can get so when you're buying leather make sure that um first of all you know what kind it is start off with something really simple don't buy buffalo hide right off the bat because buffalo hide is very expensive and it's also very sacred to our people so you don't want it unless you know what it's going to be for um so then uh so what I did was I didn't buy buffalo hide for a while because I didn't want to, um, you know, ruin it. It's so expensive, right? Um, so I, I buy deer hide. I work a lot with the buckskin and it's so easy and it's very supple and um, it's, it's really super easy to bead in too. Like if you, uh, if you want to be directly onto the leather. And I think that one of these days when we do our sessions, we're going to be directly on leather, but I don't know what we're going to make because it's going to be long and it's going to be, um, it's going to be like, we'll have to figure out what we want, right? It can't be just, it can't just be like a, a piece of leather. You got to have something that you want to make, right? So we have to think about that. And uh, some of the some of the leathers that you buy are dyed, and they're ta they're tanned you know, with chemicals, right? And so, of course, when they're dyed with chemicals, they have an obvious taste. Uh, not well, not taste. I guess you're not really chewing on it, but they have a an obvious smell and texture and everything, right? If you can get brain tanned leather. Brain tan leather looks the same on both sides. It's really beautiful. Like this, the stuff that we're working with right now, this is dyed with chemical. And most of it is. Mostly everything that you get is. The odd, odd time you can come up with uh, brain tan leather. And that's usually done by your local hunter. So somebody on the reserve who does his own, um, his own tanning that's the guy that you want to get leather from but it's hard to find those guys now they, they're rare you don't get that often usually up like moose factory and stuff like that you get it up there so anyways i had to pull out my beads again because i missed one again I lost my <laughs> What, you lost your needle? I lost my needle. <laughs> Sorry. Pretty much that. Are you serious? 
I just dropped on the floor. I'm like, oh no. Oh no, what are you gonna do? I'm, I'm looking, I should find it. Keep working. <laughs> well, I hope you find it, Sarah. Yeah, oh, wait, thank you. <laughs> I was doing it like, oh, doing so good. You must be close to the end of your thread. I'm pretty much, yeah. I'm like, no, I have lots left. <laughs> Um, so, so yeah, they are tiny. They're, they're I'll find it. I just can't let it here. I think it was a stretch off. I need it. I'll find it. I'm not worried. I'll be back in the game in a minute somehow. <laughs> um, so I am couple about four rows from the end now ha, found it oh good <laughs> sorry about that but i didn't leave it it's okay oh, uh, yeah, the game. <laughs> you don't know how many times i'm sitting in my chair at home and i go oh no where is it it's usually because i'm a two needle beater i do i do two needle beating a lot so okay. usually one of my needles is the one with the tail like this and that's my tack down needle. And that's the one that I, and I'm, and then I, I realize I don't have it anymore and I'm looking and <laughs> it's like, okay, do I get up from my chair yeah. or sure. do I, or do I just like look really close? <laughs> you end up sure. getting up and oh my goodness. Yeah. So you got to keep an eye on your needles. So once we get to the end of this, I'm, or once I get to the end, I'm going to show you how to uh, tie it off and then how to, um, and then you can do the other, your other end exactly the same way, but you're going to need to tie this end off first. And now I'm so glad I put my glove on. <laughs> my thread hasn't frayed since. It's so hard, you know, like I... <laughs> That's probably another reason why I work with the fire line too, is because um, it doesn't wreck your, like you can't wreck it no matter what your skin is like. It's, it's pretty tough, eh? Like fishing line. And so don't be confused, Sarah, about fishing line. I know you're a fisherwoman. Yeah. <laughs> so don't be confused that you can use any old fishing line to bead with. There's okay. A, there's a reason why we use fire line. Okay. Um, and it's because the fire line is braided. It's braided. Oh, okay. It's beautiful. Like you even know that when you're fishing with it, it's the best line out there, right? Yes. So um, just make sure that if you do find something like wild, I think it's called wildfire. Okay. They also have one that you can use, but make sure that it's a braided one. Braided. Okay. Okay, because um, I know if I, I, I did try it with a spool, like, a, I mean, we had some there and I'm like, oh, fishing line, I can just use any old fishing line. Yeah. Lots of that. Don't. You know okay. what happens? It gets all um, tangled up. <laughs> yes, that's the perfect word for it. It's a tangled mess. So just don't do it. Use fire line if you're going to do it. And I know that the rest of you ladies, once you have got this bug in you to be a beater, and I know Pam's already there. <laughs> yeah. She's already there. Jen is already there. Jen, Jen is doing very good. She's gone now, but she's doing very, very good with her beating. She's been practicing a lot ever since we uh, did the uh, um, the brick stitch and, and the ladder stitch. Anyways, um, as you get better and the bug is in you, then you start buying that. But for now, just stick to thread, learn how to use the thread, and then um, and then eventually graduate into the fire line. Because I don't want you spending the money on a, on a spool of it. It's very, very expensive. It's 125 yards costing 35 bucks. Well, you can sometimes you can get it at Canadian Tire for a little bit cheaper, but you gotta watch for the sale. So 
where you can buy this. What is this? 5,000 yards? <laughs> I don't know. It's huge. Anyways, you can buy that for like 20 bucks and you're good to be like, would I use this in my lifetime? I don't know. Maybe <laughs> it's, it's a lot of, a lot of thread. Anyway, so is there a certain weight of uh, the fire line? Yes. So you have, if you're going to just start with your, uh, or if you're going to stick with the size 10 beads, you can use an eight pound test. Uh, if you're going to go with smaller beads. So um, I recently did a purchase. I don't know if I told anybody this or not, but I recently did a purchase and bought size 13 beads. Oh my God. Okay. So you know what those little, those little pins are like the little stick pin. So the little head on, on the end of the stick pin. Okay. Well, my 13s are a little bit smaller than that. <laughs> so uh, when you're using size 13 beads and they're Charlotte, so Charlotte's are very much like uh, the seed bead. They're, they're, they're the same type of shape, right? And they're very beautiful when you're doing intricate work. Um, again, you wouldn't want to do a full set of Rugelli. It would take you years to get them done because they're so small. Anyways, uh, you will need a smaller needle. So currently we're using a number 10 needle, which is perfect for size 11 beads and size 10 beads and up, right? And those bigger beads. But when you're getting into smaller work or smaller needle or beads, sorry, you're going to need a smaller needle. So you'll probably need like a size 13 needle. Good luck threading it. That's all I got to say. <laughs> I have some 13s at home, 13. And I think I bought them by mistake. Again, at the beginning when I didn't really know what I was doing. I listened to somebody, oh yeah, just use these 13s, they're the best. Okay, took them home. And at that time I didn't have my magnifier light or whatever, I didn't have all my whole beading station. I just had my own eyes. Anyways, um, I couldn't thread those needles to save my life. There was no way that there was thread going on those. And I was just using thread back then. So if you're gonna do the size, 13 needle, you're going to need a four, four or six pound test. And then that will go through that needle. Uh, also, the other thing that you have to remember too, is that the smaller the bead, the less passes that you're going to be able to make through the bead in order to, to tighten it up or whatever, like um, right now it would probably work okay with just one strand, but putting two or three, it would be very difficult. Okay, so I am uh, literally right at the end of mine. I got one more row of black to put on and then I'm going to show you how to tighten it up and um, finish this end off and then you'll be able to do your other end on your own. Okay. So did anybody learn anything today? Yeah. Keep the beads on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, I know it went really fast and uh, I know it's not always the easiest when you're on camera. Um, it's better when you're in person, but I'm hoping that you get the idea of what's going on and you see that it's very repetitive. Yeah. Pretty neat. And, um, uh, and it looks really good when it's done. I, I imagine your designs must look really sweet by now. Yeah, see uh, mine is at the very, very end and I, I need to tighten it now because the tail has tapered itself in. And so I can feel it's a bit loose there. Eh? Like you can see, it's quite loose. So when we tighten this, um, it'll hold it in place properly. So uh, I don't know where y'all are at. 
Can can you give me kind of an idea of where your what what yours looks like so I can see where we need to go? I'm at the bottom. <laughs> at the bottom. And, and so I'm at the top. <laughs> oh, that, looks, that looks so, really good. Oh remember how um how I started backwards, I guess. Yeah. So I've ended up at the top. I started at the bottom of the oh, feather. That's fine. That's okay. It doesn't matter what end. Not at all. Yeah. But it looks fantastic. I just kept going. <laughs> no, and that's fine. Like it doesn't matter what end. And you'll find out which one is more comfortable for you. Now yeah. for the end, Terry, can I slice that? Like design that at the bottom of the leather? You can, but um, I want you to go through your all your end beads, eh? Okay. With your thread. Go through every single one of those up beads. Now, do I tie a knot? Do I tie a knot to that? Uh, after that, you're going to want to tie a knot. Yeah. Okay. So I go through them at least three times, and if I can fit a fourth, I'll go through it because you don't want that to ever come undone. Okay. Are we doubling it too? Like we double it? No. Nope. You don't have. Okay. No. Nope. Just keep going through, keep going through, and then you're going to do it to the other end as well. And then as you as you go through, pull on it, and it'll tighten it up. It'll snug those in, and it'll kind of start tapering in towards itself. Okay. Okay. So everybody's got that, got that down. What what I'm asking. Kelly, how are you doing? I didn't see yours. Are you with us? Oh, it looks really good. Yeah. That looks really nice. I love your color choices. Okay, so I'm at the part where now I'm almost forcing my needle to go through. So I'm going to tie this off. And um, basically you do your same tie off. Every single time you tie off, you just kind of go underneath whatever is next to you there and do your surgeon's knot, which is going through there once, back through again and pull. Whoop. And you just pull. And then uh, just to save face, I go through the next one. I know it's very, very tight, but I go through it one more time and I tie another knot because this is my feather. I'm going to be using this every single time, right? So I want to make sure that it's not going to come off or fall apart on me. So I loop it back through and do it again and pull it nice and snug. And now you're good. So now you can cut that end off. And if you remember, you left a tail on your other end, a thread tail. You see where your thread tail is? Mine's a little wound up there, but you see where it is? Yeah. You left it long for a reason. And it's so that you can loop it through all those up beads. Look at that. That thread is so nicely. My goodness. Okay. So what direction is this one going? So it's going to go through the same direction I was doing it before. So, and you can see how loose it is. So now, Say, for example, you felt like you didn't have enough beads to cover your leather or the wood shaft that you're using for your keychains or whatever, or your lighter, add another row of beads. That's all you got to do. And it's exactly the same method. Just go through your top bead, add your beads, add your beads, add your beads until, you're, until you feel like you have enough. But in this situation, I think I've got plenty. So I'm just going to loop through all those. And maybe I could have added another row, but I think I'll, I'll be okay. Once it gets tightened there, you'll see. And I'm going to cut some more of those little fluffy ones off because they're kind of annoying. They're getting in the way there. Okay. Oh, and the other thing too about feathers, sometimes you can get some in um, and they're a little bit uh, damaged. I hope nobody got a damaged feather. I tried really hard to pick out really good ones and send them out. Uh, so I hope that um, I hope that y'all uh, got good feathers. But if there's a situation, say you found one, 
And I know we find feathers all the time when we're out walking in the woods and stuff like that. So if you find one and it's a bit damaged, don't be afraid to shape it. Don't be afraid at all. You just take your, like, make sure you smooth it out, find out where it had, like if it had a nick there at the end. So what I would do is I would start here and I would just slowly taper in to where that nick was. And it would be perfectly shaped. And there's nothing wrong with doing that. Nothing. Because um, I know sometimes when you, especially when you buy feathers, they're not always in perfect shape. I know this one here. And this one, this is a really great example. I kept this one for myself just to show you. So, um, this one has some of the, the feather part hair or whatever you call that missing from in the middle. So I would say that this was damaged probably by, um, you know, something hitting it because it's right in the middle and it's all still, everything else is still joined together. So the damage is literally in between. I don't know if you can see it or not. You see where my finger is there? There's kind of a hole there. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's all that is. But and you can't fix that. So you just kind of that must have been somewhere where he got damaged. He got hit or whatever. And you appreciate that. But the ends, if they're nicked off, it's usually because of shipping or packing. And you can trim that. Um, OK, I'm at the end here of this again. So I'm just going to give it kind of one more round. Just. Uh, to see if I can. It's getting pretty tight though. And you don't want to go too tight because then you bust a bead. Oh, don't bust any beads. If you do, it's not impossible to, um, to put one in its place, but they never ever look right. So if you're feeling at all that your needle is being forced in, that you are going to have to pull that through and it doesn't work, push it back and stop right there. Don't go any farther because you'll bust your bead. And when you're say, you know how we went and we tied our thread down, Pam? Yeah. We went down in, in the bottom and into the middle. Well, if you bust a bead down in there because you forced that needle through there and you have to try to fix that, it's awful. Right. So just try really hard to never force your, your needle through. If it's not fitting, it's because there's no more room, okay? I've had to do it. I've been a sucker for pushing it through there. <laughs> Just don't. Okay, so I am completed this one. And I'm just going to do a little bit of trimming on the ends here. Just to get that kind of looking good there. And, and taper it back a bit. And, oh, I might have did a little bit too much. So we just have to watch how, how much you do. Okay, so that's how my feather looks. And then now for your end, uh, the end is nothing fancy. Um, you decide how many you can do. So one. So, so I was taught a long time ago that if you have one piece that's this wide, uh, can you see me? Not really, eh? Okay. So the width of this, you can't just go cut, 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 right? Because what will happen is you'll end up with one big fatty and then a little skinny one. So you find your center and you do it right down the center. So take your scissors and try to stay as center as you possibly can and go right up to just below your beads. Try not to cut your bead thread, okay? You wanna make sure that you're staying away. So now I have two even pieces and then I find my center here and I go back up to the top again and try really hard to stay straight. And you go right to the very top again. Oh, and I'm a little bit crooked here, so I'm gonna fix that. 
one, and then go back up to the top of this one. So I ended up with four. You may end up with more depending on how thick your feather tail was. And then there's my ends. So um, with these ends now, you can do the pony bead if you like, um, if you happen to have any at home, or maybe you have something special that you want to put on. Some people put conchos on, some people put, um, some people just leave it like this. It kind of looks a little plain to me, but um, uh, silly old me forgot to put the pony beads. So I apologize for that. But, uh, you know, maybe it's okay. I got some. <laughs> yeah, I know you have some, Sarah, because I see your beads on, on the Facebook. So, yes, go ahead and uh, you go ahead and put them on. And then for the other ladies that don't have any, uh, maybe you have something laying around that's kind of like a, a bead or cylindrical or tubular or anything like that. Even um, doing a tie knot is, looks nice too. I, I like it just knots too. Yep. Just you knots. Definitely you can definitely put a knot in the end or, you know, yeah, just decide. Well, what you every, everybody's different, eh? Like you can cut it sideways. It looks, yeah. I think they look really nice. Okay. So um, what time is it? My housekeeper's in here to do the laundry. 8.16. So that's 6.30. Oh, it's 6.30. Okay. So, um, I'm going to uh, finish tying these with you ladies and do as everybody okay do you need to know anything else while uh, we're still online you have any other questions Kelly. No, I did my best. <laughs> uh, no, I just, uh, I just want to reiterate the, the closing off you just go back through all the beads. As just many times as you can to cinch it up. Yeah, just the up beads. And that's how you do it at the top as well, because yeah. it's pretty loose. You want to do both the top and the bottom, so that way this will never, see, this will never slide off now, eh? It's nice, it's tight, it's firm, it looks very, very good. It's, it's a little crooked there, but that's just a matter of straightening it out, you know, just tr twisting it a little bit there, and you see how nice that looks? Colors are a little bit weird. I could have went with something a little bit more colorful, but it's nice. Yeah. So there, that's your, sorry, go ahead. It, you would use the same stitch to do lighters and keychains. you were saying. Do you use leather for those as well? I do. Do you, yeah. wrap, do you wrap the wrap or yeah so okay. i showed you the picture of of the the uh, um the, the keychains that i had done recently i'll show you a picture mm -hmm. of it again just so you kind of get an idea so so oh, this yes. was all wrapped in leather first and you know you don't have to but it's really hard to put tassels on after the fact right so yes. and also the wood is really super slippery and the leather is not the leather is is great cuz it's a, it it holds in place right and um generally as a rule i always leave the suede side out i don't know why i didn't on this i was wondering why it felt so slippery and it's because i had it the opposite way of what I normally would. I usually all like all, if you look at any one of my keychains, always the suede side is out. So try that next time. Okay. Um, so yes, absolutely do um, do leather on all of them. Your your keychain. What did you have that leather wrapped onto? So um, at the hardware store, you can buy dowels. They're long maple or birch dowels, usually maple because it's the stronger one that they like to use for doweling. Um, so you can use those and I, I cut them on the chop saw at home. And uh, depending on the length that you want, uh, all of my keychains are two inches long like the, the dowel itself, I cut it two inches. 
um, I found out something uh, that's really bothersome to me. Um, if you're mailing out any keychains, be careful of the size of dowel that you buy. So this, there's a dowel that's actually this size. It's uh, about a quarter of an inch, roughly. Would cost you a dollar thirty-eight to mail it across Canada. <laughs> I bought a set of dowels uh, that were uh, five eighths, and then once the beadwork is on it, it makes it a, a quarter or three quarters of an inch. Put it in an envelope. Go to mail it. Twenty bucks. Yeah. So buy your dowels a bit smaller. Um, Go with uh, either a three eighths or half inch dowel. Try not to get anything that's uh, over the half inch mark because especially if you're mailing it, if it's for personal and you're at home, the bigger they are, the better. They're beautiful. I love my keychains. Um, uh, and I like the size of it. So that's why I picked the, the size that I picked. But for mailing purposes, I'm definitely gonna be downsizing my dowels so that I don't have to pay $20 Twenty dollars from here to Aurelia. Mm. Yeah. So, um, anyways, is there any other questions that you have uh, that I can answer before we sign off? Uh, how do we get into the next class? <laughs> so, oh, so you're going to come back? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. Good to hear. So that means Thanks, you, Terry. Yes, thank that you. Means that you learned something or you enjoyed it, one of the two or both. <laughs> um, so what happens is I figure out what we're going to make. And uh, then I put out an email, a poster generally to, um, you know, get everybody kind of involved. And then you respond to that, uh, either that or through email, you'll see the poster and then you already have my email. So you can just say, uh, put me in or, you know, or whatever. Uh, so what did we say we were going to do next time? We're going to do some flat work, two needle stitch, right? Two needle. Yeah. Okay. Is everybody okay with that? I might, I might pass, <laughs> but you never know. I might take it out. Okay. So, uh, I'm trying it. I, I love the, this whole process of learning. I don't know anything about beading, but it's a lot of fun. Okay, okay so <laughs> oh, you know, right now you have enough beads and enough thread to play with for the next month um, to just practice and, and just learning how to hold them in your hands and stuff. So give yourself a few nights, you know, a week or whatever, and just play with those beads. It does not be anything fancy. Just do another tubular thing, you know, uh, beat around a, a pill bottle. Uh, they're great to beat around um, and you don't have to have leather to practice just uh, use okay. a piece of can you know what works really great um, is denim so if you have a pair of old jeans that you know are going to be used for patchwork uh, use your denim uh, and it, it it holds just like leather does so you won't have any mm -hmm. problem beating around it I see a lot of men bead on denim um, they like it so you can go ahead and do that and practice your peyote stitch. And what that does is it gives you your, your, uh, the feel, right? The feel of the needle, the feel of the thread, the, the feel of the beads, it gives you vision and, 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 it, and it gives you the practice before we come back. And uh, I know that, that uh, I've sent you enough beads that you're gonna be able to do whatever you need with those. Oh, yeah. And then if you want to practice some flat stitch, um, I know a few of the ladies uh, have uh, done a little bit of flat work with me. Kelly, you did uh, a little bit of work with the poppy and Pam did a little bit of work uh, with uh, brick stitch. Uh, so, you know, just uh, remember some of the tools that we had with those and um, get a piece of material and just beat on that until you get the hang of it. And, uh, and you'll be ready for the next one. It'll be, mm -hmm. it'll be good. And especially flat work. Like you're going to love flat work. It's so fun. So uh, anyways, if, uh, if that's it and you're happy, 
send me some pictures of your finished product. Take a nice picture and send it to me. And uh, I'd love to see your finished work. Awesome. Thank you, Terry. Oh, you're Thank very you, welcome, Terry. ladies. Have a good evening. Enjoy the rest of your night. Yes, me too. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye. Bye. How do we get off <laughs> here? I'm not sure, but I'm going to end it so it'll end. Okay, thanks, Terry. Okay. Bye.